Welcome to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jay Darren Gross. This is the podcast focused on commercial real estate investment and risk management strategies. Weekly, we have conversations with commercial real estate investors and professionals who provide their experience and insight to help you grow your real estate portfolio. Today, my guest is Victor Juracek. Victor is a real estate fix and flipper based in Gainesville, Florida. He completed 40, excuse me, 20 flips last year and is on pace to do an additional 30 flips for this year, 2021. Ironically, his best flip was a $64,000 net profit deal that almost that he almost backed out of. And uh, in just a minute, we're gonna speak with Victor about what makes a successful flip and uh, how to get started to uh, do your own flips. But first, a quick reminder, if you like our show, CREPN Radio, there are a couple of things you can do to help us out. You can like, share, and subscribe. And uh, as always, we encourage you to leave a comment. We love to hear from our listeners. Also, if you'd like to see how handsome our guests are, be sure to check out our YouTube chance, channel. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. And while you're there, please subscribe. With that, I want to welcome my guest, Victor. Welcome to CREPN Radio. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Well, I'm looking forward to our talk today. Uh, before we get started, if you could take just a minute and share with the listeners a little bit about your background. Yeah, for sure. So I'm a, a fix and flipper. Um, so for, uh, just to give a clear definition, I buy property, fix it up, sell it. So I actually take ownership of it. Um, primary fix and flipper. I live in Gainesville, do most of my deals locally for Alachua County. Um, went full time about two and a half years ago. I used to work kind of corporate. I was healthcare full time, realized it wasn't for me for a number of reasons. Then went into flipping and real estate, really enjoyed it. And so where I plan to stay forever. So uh, that's a quick introduction on me, but I, I really fell in love with the flipping process. So that's what I've really been focusing on recently. Awesome. So you're down there in Gatorville or Gatorland. Is that the uh, yeah, right? right? Go Gators. Yeah. yeah. University of Florida. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So well, well, let's talk a little bit about that. So you, you, um, you said you, you were in the medical uh, industry and uh, decided that wasn't for you. How did, how did you decide that real estate was uh, a more attractive vehicle for you? Yeah. So I don't know if you can relate to this, but I, I always had like in the back of my mind, like real estate, real estate, real estate. So it's almost always like, Hey, I want to do this thing. And then the next thing is once I get some money then I can go into real estate. So it's always like this thing that followed me around for years and years and just, um, you know, finally decided to take a leap. I, it didn't make sense to me to like, okay, let me do this thing so I can do this other thing. I figured out like, what if I just do a straight shot to what I actually want to do? And, um, you know, the rest is history. Got it. So flipping houses, I mean, there's, there's multiple uh, opportunities in real estate, um, different asset classes, um, you know, mm -hmm. and different ways to make money. Um, what is it that uh, appealed to you about flipping houses? Uh, I really liked, so there's a couple of things. So the first thing I really like about flipping houses is like, you get to see the transformation. So you buy a house and it's kind of crummy, beat up, outdated. Um, you paint it, you fix it up, you make it all nice. And then suddenly it's this nice, modern, cool thing. Everyone wants to live there. Uh, before people saw the before pictures, they'd run away. Like, I don't even want to be near this place. And then suddenly afterwards, like everyone's running towards like, I'm in, I want to buy it. Uh, so it's really cool to see that transformation, just to see like it really improve as a property, improve the neighborhood too. A lot of times we do a flip and then we're suddenly the house, the nicest house in the neighborhood from worst to best. So it's, it's cool to see that. Um, that's the first thing I really enjoy about it. The second thing I'd say, what's really cool about flipping is like you're in, you're out, you get a big check and then you can move on. So typically on average for my flips, about 30K net profit, uh, give or take. Some deals are better, some deals are worse, but uh, that's typically the average. And what's really cool about it is like you now get this big check to walk away with, uh, with the rental side of things. Like I would have this big check with the rentals. Like I would be on the hook for ongoing maintenance, tenants. Like I'd still have to, like the property was in the back of my mind forever uh, to take care of. But with the flipping, like you're in and you're out and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So I really like that, that quick nature of it where you can move on. And the, the, the big paydays uh, is really exciting too. Um, that I've seen, especially with a lot of beginners, 
um, you know, getting a plus 300 bucks a month from a, you know, good rental. Um, that's exciting. But what's really life changing is, you know, plus $30,000 in your bank account. You start to think differently, you start to um, act differently in a good way. Um, you start to have more options open. If there's any sort of emergency, like you can handle it. Um, so that's what I've seen. That's what I really enjoy about the flipping. Gotcha. And as far as the, uh, the, the, uh, actual, the, the work, uh, the, the, the changes, the property from the, uh, um, the worst to the best on the block there. Uh, do you do the work yourself? Do you have subcontractors? How do you go about doing that? So when I started, I actually did the work myself, like the painting and the flooring. Uh, there's a couple of things wrong with that. The first was like, I didn't have that much time. Uh, so once you start to do more and more volume, like your time becomes an issue. Second thing, I'm not very good at those things is what I found out. Uh, it's much better to get professionals in there. So where I'm at now, um, I have a project manager and then she hires the people uh, like hires the painter, pays the painter, hires the flooring person, you know, pays the flooring person. So it just makes it a lot easier that way uh, where you don't have to worry about um, that sort of thing. So especially as you do more and more, like if I wanted to do 30 this year, I'd be killing myself working 24 seven, trying to fix all these places up. Uh, so that's why I recommend. Um, there's a lot of different ways to, to do the renovations. Uh, there's like the do it yourself model. Um, there's the GC model. And it really just depends on the person and their, um, their preference. Um, but it just realized that there's going to be a trade-off like time and money. So if you do it yourself, it's going to cost you time, save you money. If you hire it out fully from a GC, it's going to save you time, cost you money. So there's always that balance to play with as you're getting into the renovations. Got it. Speaking of the time uh, aspect, what do you, what's an average time for you from uh, uh, acquire to, to sale? Yeah. So from closing table to closing table, I think we're on average about four months. Um, one month to 45 days is like the actual renovation. Um, then we spend, you know, we list it. It's a, luckily a hot market now. So typically within a week, it's under contract. And there's the inspection, appraisal, you know, all that stuff to work through in the closing. That typically takes 30 days, 45 days. So typically at four months on average, um, in and out. Some of them take less, some of them take more, but that's what we've been seeing recently. Got it. And are, are most of yours more of a cosmetic uh flip or are you getting into uh, uh, roof lines and bumping out walls and changing the floor plan or doing any behind the wall kind of stuff? I, I try to keep them as simple as possible. Like we've done the full gut jobs and then we've done the, the cosmetic like lipstick on a pig is what sometimes people call it. Um, so we've done both. We've really done both there. Um, I really like the quick, simple ones where like you're in, you're out, you can move on. Um, just because like once you start opening up walls, changing the layout, you know, doing all that stuff, you start to open a can of worms where you open a wall. It's like, oh, we didn't realize we have to do this. And now we have to fix this. And now it's like you keep adding to your budget for the renovation. Um, so I just really like the quick in and out uh, paint flooring as much as possible. But, you know, I'll do anything where the numbers make sense. Got it. So how do you find your deals? What's the, the, uh, the source or how do you source your deals? Yeah, no, for sure. So uh, about half my deals I source on my own uh, through like cold calling, through uh, just like Facebook groups, uh, a lot of referrals. Uh, and about, about half are wholesalers. Um, and for your audience, maybe they know what a wholesaler is, but just to give a good definition. So wholesaler is basically someone who goes out and finds deals. They put it under contract and they can sell you that contract. So I've had a lot of luck with them, try to build relationships with them and uh, they send, you know, they send deals and there's a whole wholesaler movement taking place where it used to be that um, here in Gainesville, when I started, there's like maybe one, maybe two wholesalers. And now I have like 15, 20 wholesalers on my list. So it's suddenly it's like a brand new movement. And that's great for me uh, for the most part where they bring me deals. I don't have to do anything. It's like, oh, here's a deal on a sil silver platter. And uh, it just makes my life a lot easier. No, and that, that makes a lot of sense. The, uh, you know, have more bird dogs out there uh, finding the opportunities. That's great. Exactly. So uh, funding, you mentioned in the beginning or when we, we were first started talking about, you know, that, that hurdle of, of um, you know, do you wait till you get a big pile of money together? How, how do you, you know, how do you do that first one kind of, kind of thing? Can you, can you share a little bit about uh, how you go about funding uh, your flips? Yeah, no, for sure. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I'll talk about the one, my first flip, where that was like, I was, I had a low 500 credit score. And then I had maybe a couple thousand in the bank, and I was still able to get the flip done. 
Uh, so basically what, what happened, um, so I found this great deal. Um, there was a lady, there was a nurse who was living out of state and she was tired of the property and got hit by Hurricane Irma and she was just tired of dealing with it. And her, uh, her mom passed away, so it was an inherited property. So there was a couple layers of motivation there and she just, she just wanted to be done with it. Uh, she's like, hey, I'm out. I don't want to, you know, I just want to sell it. So um, I got the property under contract. Uh, what I did next, it was a great deal. So we we're going to buy it at 105. We we're going to put in about 25 ish and then sell for, you know, 170 to, to 200. So that was the plan. So there was, there was room there. There's a good potential profit there. Uh, so it was, a, it was a good deal. So we got a good deal, got under contract. What I did next, so I reached out to my network um, and I found what's called what I call like a money partner. So I found the deal. I would help with the renovations. I would help sell the property. I'd be like the boots on the ground, sweat equity. Like I would be the one um, putting it all together and they would be more like a, a money partner. So they would put in all the funds to buy it, to fix it up, to sell it. And then we would split the profit after that. That's how I got my first one done. And you'd be surprised like how many people in your network have the funds for these types of deals. And there's like plenty of different ways to structure it, but um, it, it gets you started. It got me started. Um, so I was able to turn that deal into, into multiple deals, start doing deals on my own, which is what I'm doing now. Um, so makes it really exciting, but, um, that's how I got my first deal, just using that money partner model. And then we split the profits. Um, and it just, it's a hell of a start. It's a great start because, uh, my first year I did like two, then I did eight, then last year, 20, then this year, 30. So like, it just gets you going and that's exponential from there, which is really exciting. Yeah. It, and that, uh, money partner, um, do you find, uh, the first one is, uh, pretty challenging to get, or what, what how did you go about, uh, conveying to your, your money partner that you were, um, you know, able to pull this off. Um, so how I did that, I just basically shared the numbers like, Hey, this is what we're buying it at. Here's some pictures. This is what it looks like, how much work it needs. And this is how much we can sell it for. Um, and then once you share that number, like, Hey, we're, we can make on that one, we made, I think 28 K net. Uh, we wanted more, but, um, we always want more, but uh, uh, 28 is what we ended up with. So we split that. So just sharing that, like, hey, if you put money into this deal, we can potentially share this, this profit. So you're kind of sharing the benefit with them. Um, and then also at the same time, it's you can mention a lot of people especially have uh, money just sitting in the bank and it's earning, you know, 0.01% interest. Uh, so might as well put it to work. And there's a lot of people who want to get started in real estate and they just don't know how to get started. Um, and when you give them this sort of opportunity, you know, they've been sitting on their money for a while. Hey, I've been watching HGTV and I want to get into real estate. Um, so it just lines up and it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, not to say typically your first deal is going to be the hardest. It does get easier over time. Um, so just to, just to answer your point. So yes, it is going to be a little bit harder the first time, but it does get easier once you build a track record and know what you're doing and um, all that good stuff. Got it. And as far as the uh, cost of money um, for something like that, I know um, as an insurance agent, I, I've worked with a, a lot of flippers over the years. And, and I think um, th there's definitely the, the difference between the, the person that's got some sort of a, a clock in their head that understands they need to get this project done uh, versus the person that doesn't have that clock and it lingers and it lingers and it lingers um, kind of thing. Um, you mentioned your, your average time is about four months. Mm -hmm. Um, your first one, can you tell how long that one took? Yeah. So the renovation took about eight weeks. So it was about two months. Um, it was listed for about two weeks, then got, then got under contract. And then I think to close that one was about 30 days. So that was two plus a half. So like in that same time frame, roughly. So three that's, to five months, roughly. That's great. So you were able to keep that, that kind of timeline going. That's great. And yeah, luckily, yes. In, uh, when you, when you run your budget, uh, you know, you've got your acquisition cost and your renovation cost. And if you, you've got your four months timeline, is there a, a I mean, a carrying cost, kind of a, a market rate, uh, what kind of range are you seeing for that kind of stuff? You mentioned like, you know, if you leave your money in the bank, you can get around 1%. What, what kind of range or, or, um, money partners, what, what kind of rate do they charge for that? It's going to depend on the money partner. So for some people, um, I guess if you're splitting the deal too, that yeah, that's that's where they get their yeah. benefit. Um, yeah. So it's one of those things. It just depends. Um, for that first money partner, it was um, I think it was 70, 30, 70 them, thirty me. And again, I was just happy to get that first deal done, which is awesome. Uh, so that was the first one. 
Other That's ones right. have done 50, 50, some of them um, it's been like 50, 50, and they want like a 6%, like a payment in kind type of thing um, where like they charge 6%, but you don't necessarily get a bill for 6%. You just um, at the end, they would get that. So I've seen it all different ways. It just, it's really uh, person to person. So there's no correct answer, like whatever both parties are, are open to. Um, again, I'd highly recommend like, hey, just get your first deal done. You're going to build so much momentum out of that. And you just, you'll be surprised where you're at in, you know, a year, three years, five years. Right. No, I, and I, I totally agree. I mean, the, the experience is kind of like your down payment mm -hmm. uh, to, to really kind of, you know, start your business and, and get it really going. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, so I think before we started recording, you and I talked a little bit and um, you'd mentioned kind of a philosophy of do a flip, buy a rental, do a flip, buy a rental kind of thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, how, how you see that and how you encourage people or, or what, what's your uh, philosophy on, on uh, you know, flip rental, flip rental kind of thing? Yeah, no, for sure. So it's one of those things um, I see a lot of beginners make the mistake like, okay, I want to get into real estate. So the first deal is a rental. And the problem with that, at least as how I see it, is like you'll put some money aside, you'll put that as a down payment into your rental and you'll start cash flowing. That's awesome. Nothing wrong with that. But it'll take you for you to do your next deal, it's going to take quite a long time. You have to save for years and years, save the cash flow, save your income until you can finally do another, another deal. And it's going to be the same story. Like it's going to take a couple of years to do that next deal. So that's why I recommend flip rental, flip rental, because then like you do a flip, let's say you'll make 20, 30, 40,000. Awesome. Put that as a down payment into a rental and then do another flip you know, put, put that as a down payment into another rental, but that way that speeds up that process. Like now you're um, acquiring or like generating capital that you can then put into rentals. Um, so it's just really exciting that way where um, you just basically buy as fast as you can flip houses, you can buy rentals. Um, so then it becomes uh, like how, how many properties do you want to buy? How many flips do you want to do? Uh, then you're not stuck waiting for long periods of time. So that's the philosophy behind that. And it doesn't have to be that specific ratio. It can be like two flips, one rental, or, you know, three flips, one rental. And I've seen people uh, make permutations of that too, where it's like a flip in a burr or like a flip in a multifamily. Uh, but they kind of, they play around with that formula, but then you can accelerate your real estate. Uh, you know, instead of taking 10 years to build a, a decent portfolio, it'll take you, you know, three. Got it. Um, what's an ideal opportunity look like for you? Yeah. So we typically buy, so we buy houses, condos, townhomes, mobile homes. So we're pretty open. If someone's living in there, we'll, you know, if someone can live in there, we'll, we'll flip it. Um, and luckily flipping is as simple as buy low, sell high. So even like a mobile home, sometimes we buy it, you know, like for 50 and put in 10 and sell for hundred. And that's still a deal. Um, but we're just buying low and selling high. Uh, typically, how we look at deals is like a, what's called 70% rule. So for your listeners here, 70% uh, rule is 70% ARV minus repairs is your max offer. Um, ARV being after repaired value. So like when you list it, retail, once it's all fixed up, what can it sell for is what that ARV means. Uh, so 70%. So just a quick example, um, let's say you can sell a place for 100000 you need to put in about 10000 into it in terms of repairs. So that means your max offer is 60,000. So that's the max you can play, pay for a place. So if someone says, hey, I wanna sell you this property for 50,000, like, yes, that's a deal I'm in. If they say, hey, I wanna sell you this place for 80,000 as an example, it's like, oh, I don't know, those numbers are too tight, that's not a deal. Um, so it makes it really, really um, clear, like what's a deal, what's not a deal? Because there's a million other factors that can go into you know, what's a deal and what's not versus just the numbers. Um, so it's like, what about the neighborhood? What about the school? This is a two bedroom, one bath, not a three bedroom, two bath, which is what everyone wants. Or, oh, the square footage is a little bit smaller. Oh, you know, like anything you could name of, there's a million variables, but I like just distill it to the numbers. Uh, then it becomes super clear, like, okay, this is a deal. This isn't a deal. Um, that just makes it much easier to analyze these properties. Got it. So based on the number of properties you've done, uh, we've talked about some of your, your, uh, home runs or your, your better ones. So there was one that I guess you made 64,000. Um, can you talk about one that, that didn't go well? Is there any, any that you, you were happy to get out of uh, or, or have you made money on all of them? So luckily we've made money on all of them. Uh, sometimes it's not as much as we want where we set out to make 30,000, we made 10,000 in the end. Uh, so that, that happens too. Um, I've 
it's it's tough to bat a thousand at you know 30k each um so one of the less less fortunate deals and again i see all these as like a learning experience so it's like okay cool i made a mistake i won't make that mistake again after going through that painful process and then you just grow and improve uh so your highs get higher and your lows get less less low so you kind of uh, spiral upwards positively. Uh, so there was a deal we bought here in Gainesville. Uh, it was just a normal concrete block house, um, standard. The guy was initially what we thought is he said, oh, I had some tenants and they were bad tenants. Uh, so I need to get them out. So we're like, okay. Ended up, he was late on his taxes. And if we didn't pay his tax bill, like while in the negotiation process, then he was, he was out. Like, it, I mean, they were going to auction it off and, and sell it. So we, we pay the tax bill. Um, great. Went through all the closing. He was kind of a hassle to deal with, to say the least, but uh, eventually closed. Um, and then this is the mistake we made. We didn't give what's typically called like a post-closing occupancy agreement. Uh, he said like, oh, I have some stuff in that place, some tools. Give me 30 days and I'll get them out. Uh, so typically what we've done in that case, is like there's a post-closing occupancy agreement. Like if you're not out within this time frame, there's some sort of penalty. When you close, there's like a hold back because you don't give them all the money because you want there to be some sort of penalty if they don't, they don't comply. Um, for, that's the only property we've never done it on. And that's the one we needed it on, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, he didn't move out in 30 days. It took us, I think, like two or three months to finally get him out. Uh, he was on some sort of drugs or something. And then he was... Uh, even like, resentful and bitter, like, hey, I know you guys are going to make a ton of money on this property. I should have, I could have been able to fix it myself and could have made the money myself. And I mean, we saved him from losing the house. So um, not to say he had to be grateful, but, you know, um, to be negative towards us uh, was a kick, a slap in the face. So eventually got him out, got his stuff out and to keep following up. Uh, at one point, he went to jail for about a month and has still had his stuff there. So we we're kind of waiting for that. Um, and that entire process eventually went through. So we uh, ended up renovating it, uh, fixing up selling that went pretty smoothly. And then we, you know, we were done with the deal. I think on that one, we made maybe 12,000 net profit. Um, so not a home run, but still made money. And just a good learning lesson post-closing occupancy agreement to, if they stay in the property, if they're moving out, you know, not a big deal, but they're gonna stick around, so. <laughs> yeah, no, that, especially with all the landlord tenant laws, I don't know how they're in Florida, but I know out here that's, that's yeah, definitely a, a, a touchy situation there. Um, so Victor, let me ask you, so I, I know that you, you've uh, been doing this now on your own uh, for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and Shane, now you're also uh, working with uh, new investors that are looking to get into flips. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you work with uh, your students or how you mentor uh, people? Yeah, no, for sure. So how I do it. So I flip myself full time, but I also mentor people nationwide on how to flip. So I have students all over like Michigan, Texas, New York, like any state. Um, I have students there. Um, it's a pretty like pretty involved process. Like they get direct access to me. Anytime they have a question, they ever want to send me a deal to analyze, we can, you know, review the deal together. Um, you know, so it's pretty involved. It's not necessarily just like a course, you know, here, good luck. Um, it's, it's pretty involved with the entire process and trying to help them out um, throughout that entire thing. Um, yeah, so it's exciting stuff. And I just help people. I've helped a lot of people get deals. Uh, one of my students actually beat my record. Uh, so on one flip, I made about 64K. I thought that was really good. And then on her first one, I think she made like 85,000 plus. And wow. um, it's, it's exciting. And it's also humbling where it's like, oh, wait a second. Maybe I'm not as good as, at this as I thought. But um, she's gone on to do other deals. And that's, that's great. But um, uh, that's pretty much it. I just mentor people throughout the entire flipping process. Like, how do you get the money? How do you get the deals? How do you run your numbers? How do you hire contractors? Like any thing you could think of A to Z is what I help folks out with. Got it. Got it. Hey, Victor, if we could, I'd like to shift gears here for a second. Yep. Um, by day, I'm an insurance broker and I, I work with my clients to assess risk and determine what to do with the risk. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's three strategies we typically uh, turn to. Uh, we look to see if first we can avoid the risk. Uh, if that's not an option, then we look to see if we can minimize the risk. And uh, when we can no long, cannot avoid nor minimize the risk, then we look to see if we can transfer the risk. And that's what an insurance policy is. Mm -hmm. I, I like to ask my guest if they can look at their own situation, uh, could be their clients, investors, tenants, uh, the market, um, you know, however they want to identify uh, risk, 
but uh, take a look at their own situation and uh, identify what they consider to be the biggest risk. And uh, for clarity, I'm not looking for uh, an insurance related answer per se, mm -hmm. but uh, if you're willing, I'd like to ask you, uh, Victor Juracek, what is the biggest risk? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a great question. Happy to answer it. Um, I'd say it's all about the numbers. So I always teach and preach. It's like profit margin, like margin of error. Uh, like how much you know, profit do you have potentially in the deal? Because if anything goes wrong, like it takes longer than you want, or it doesn't sell for as much as you want, or you have to go over repairs, like that's all going to eat into your profit margin. Um, so the more profit buffer or profit margin you have, the better. Uh, so again, it's all about the numbers. Uh, and there's been a lot of deals where like we set out to make 30, 40,000, that's, that's great. And then one issue came up and then another issue came up and then another issue came up and then we walked away with 10,000. But luckily we had that initial you know, profit buffer to work with or else we would have been in the red. So with that same example, like if we initially wanted to make, we said like, hey, I just wanna make 15,000. Like if I can make 15,000 on this, I'd be happy. And then that issue comes up and that issue, another issue, another issue. And then suddenly you're in the red um so that happens a ton so that's why i recommend in terms of risk like just protect yourself like if you buy any any property for the right price like every single thing can go wrong and uh you can still be profitable uh but again it's you, know, you make money when you buy is uh is the segue from that but um it's really like profit margin buffer uh just in case anything goes wrong and it will go wrong that's the other thing it always <laughs> takes longer than you want and it always costs more than you want so <laughs> the truth <clears throat> yeah no, I, I've uh, had many a projects where uh, the budget was X and uh, where I, we built a place and uh, on day one, the builder was calling me, telling me like, I didn't know there's so much dirt on this. You know, he's going to burn through my whole conting contingency on day one. <laughs> like, so yeah, you're absolutely yep. right. So uh, uh, that's great. So Victor, uh, where can the listeners go if they'd like to uh, learn more or connect with you? Yeah, so for sure, I'm, I'm very active on Facebook and I have a free Facebook group called Six Figure House Flippers. So if folks want to get, you know, get a hold of me there, uh, join the group again, it's free. I go live on there, do deal breakdowns that I'm working on, um, like give free tips. You know, there's there's a ton of great stuff and it's all free in there. So uh, if you look at me up on Facebook, Victor Yurichek, I have a unique name, luckily, so you'll, you'll find me pretty quick. And then I also have that free Facebook group. Um, and yeah, it's, it's community. If you want help on mentorship, great. You know, I'm happy to help. We can have that discussion. If you just want the free resources, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's, that's accessible to everyone. Awesome. Victor, I can't say thanks enough for taking the time to talk today. I've uh, enjoyed uh, our talk, learned a lot, and I uh, look forward to doing it again soon. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. For our listeners, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. That's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.